it's been a busy week with a ton of serious, important news stories. But rest assured, the stupid was out there. We just had to find it. So let's jump right in. Kara, we all know that there is a boob in the White House. But actually seeing boobs at the White House is something totally different. The White House hosted a Pride Month event on Saturday on its South Lawn, drawing criticism for violating precedent by flying a pride flag in the place of honor between two American flags. But this was just the beginning. Biden told attendees that they are some of the bravest and most inspiring people he has ever known. Kind of sad since he had just given the commencement speech at the Air Force Academy and we just celebrated the anniversary of D-Day where more than 2,500 Americans died in Normandy on the first day. Now those are some of the bravest and most inspiring people that this country has ever produced, in my opinion. Now, in attendance at the White House Pride event was a transgender TikTok influencer called Rose Montoya. I got to figure out what a TikTok influencer is and how they make money at it, but I digress. Montoya could be seen posing with President Biden for selfies and videos screaming, trans rights are human rights. Later, Montoya decided to film himself in his surgically enhanced augmented breasts prancing on the White House lawn topless with other trans attendees. Montoya and other people in the video have now been banned from any future White House events, the White House citing their inappropriate and disrespectful behavior. This does not sit well with Montoya, who released a video saying, quote, conservatives are trying to use the video of me topless at the White House to try to call the community groomers. I would just like to say that, first of all, going topless in Washington, D.C. is legal, and I fully support the movement in freeing the nipple. Now, many people were left speechless by this classless breach of decorum. In fact, it even shocked Hunter Biden, who said, dude, or dudette, or whatever, have some class for gosh sake. You can't go around naked on the White House lawn. Believe me, I've tried. President Biden simply requested some oatmeal and permission to watch Matlock marathons on TV. However, after viewing footage of Montoya's video, former President Bill Clinton has volunteered to host all future White House Pride events on Epstein Island in the Caribbean. Said Clinton, I need to feel their pain. Let's stay in the D.C. area for our next story. Kara, last week, the Everything is Stupid investigation team brought you a story about how Johns Hopkins Medical has updated its ID badge policy to allow employees to put the preferred pronouns and a name that reflects their gender identity on their work ID badge. I personally have chosen to use an unpronounceable symbol like Prince did, and people must now call me the heterosexual white male formerly known as Jim. My list of preferred pronouns is the periodic table. Well, John Hopkins must love being on your show, Kara, because they're back at it once again. Now defining words for our benefit. What word did the institution decide to define for humanity? Well, old Johns Hopkins has updated its LGBTQ glossary to say that a lesbian is a non-man attracted to non-men. Let's talk that again. A lesbian is a non-man attracted to non-men. Based on that definition, the following now qualify as potentially being a lesbian. Squirrels, coffee mugs, automobiles, magnetic fields, and dinner plates. When reached for comment, Associate Supreme Court Justice Katanji Brown Jackson stated, hey, I'm not a doctor. I wasn't able to define what a woman is. How can you expect me to define a lesbian? Kara, I wonder how the, woman, the women in your audience feel about being canceled in favor of non-men. Where are the feminists sounding the alarm? And this leads me to question John Hopkins. If a woman has no definition, so much so that you remove the word woman from the definition of a lesbian, how can a man have a definition? And don't we need to have a definition for a man in order to define and identify a non-man? You know, I think Johns Hopkins needs to do some mansplaining. The airline industry is back in the news. And let's be honest, Kara, flying just isn't fun. Long lines to get through security, packed flights, screaming children, delays, and surly flight attendants pretty much make the experience something we all dread. To make matters worse, the world's population is getting fatter as airplane seats are getting smaller. Frequent flyers know the sinking feeling of seeing a plus-sized person come down the aisle, approach our row, and sit down. Believe me, I know. I once had to sit between two sumo wrestlers on a flight from Sydney to Melbourne. Some airlines even charge the calorically challenge for two seats if they do not fit into a single seat or spill over into another passenger seat. Well, enter the self-proclaimed plus-size travel influencer, Jay Lynn Cheney. She has launched a petition used, uh, urging the Federal Aviation Administration to mandate that all airlines have a comprehensive customer-of-size policy that prioritizes the comfort and well-being of all passengers. 